Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's episode's brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. Thank you for your support. You can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net. Well, as I have mentioned um, a few times, uh, today is going to be a little different than our typical uh, Wednesday episode. Um, usually, we do two episodes of Johnny Dollar um, on both uh, Monday and Wednesday, and then one episode on Friday. But because there are only four episodes of this week's uh, serial uh, in uh, circulation, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, do just uh, two episodes on Monday and Friday and then something else on Wednesday. Today's uh, program will be an episode of Miss Pinkerton Incorporated, and it's one of the older programs we've uh, aired. The original air date was July of 1941. Uh, the program uh, was a CBS uh, origination of a sustaining broadcast, and it starred uh, uh, Joan Blondell and her then-husband, Dick Powell, of course famous for Richard Diamond and for Rogue's Gallery, which we've heard. Uh, the show's definitely in the detective uh, comedy husband-wife um uh, scheme of things, and we'll talk more about it afterwards. This is the first episode, and sadly, the only one in existence. So, uh, without any further ado, from July 12th, 1941, here is Miss Pinkerton Incorporated. Pinkerton Incorporated, starring Joan Blondell and Dick Powell. We present the first in a new series of half-hour comedy detective dramas, complete in each episode, yet featuring the same principal characters in situations of adventure, thrills, and romance. To begin at the beginning, as is customary and proper, the saga of Mary Vance, who may be described as a career woman, and Dennis Murray, whose occupation will be explained later, began of all places on the placid campus of Cornell University. The exact place was the reception room of Mary's dormitory, the time just a little while ago. And so you see, Miss Vance, because of your cousin's untimely death, your late uncle's detective agency now belongs to you. Well, that was awfully sweet of Uncle Mike, but what do I want with a detective agency? After all, I'm a lawyer, or I will be if I can scrape up enough money to finish my course. You will then sell the agency? Certainly. Your Uncle Michael made quite a name for himself as its head, and the business should be worth a considerable sum. Well, the next move is New York, huh? Yes, you'd have to go in any event in order to settle the estate. The sale can be arranged later. How soon must I be there? Uh, right away. Mr. Jones, I'm almost in New York right now. I beg your pardon? Is the seat taken? I don't see anyone in it. May I sit down? As long as you paid your fare, I don't see why not. You don't mind if I sit on your books and magazines? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. There you are. Thank you. No, oh, I see you're reading the case of the missing thumb. Like it? Why, did you write it? Oh, no, no, no. Just read it myself a few weeks ago. How nice. 
It's not a bad mystery, but it falls off toward the end, don't you think? I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. Want to know who done it? No, I don't want to know who done it. I just want to read my newspaper in peace, do you mind? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, how's Superman doing today? Yeah. See for yourself. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, that's Superman. What a president he'd make. Oh, my. Uh, these streamlined trains are certainly quiet, aren't they, huh? I uh, said these new trains, they're not at all noisy, are they? No, and I wish I could say the same for you. Waiter, is this the only seat left in the diner? Yes, I'm, I'm sure a gentleman won't mind you sitting at his table. Oh, what could be more pleasant than gazing at a fair lady over one's mashed potatoes? Of course I don't mind. Thank you. You're very welcome. Have a menu? Thanks again. May I suggest the macaroni au gratin? It'll take the wrinkles out of your tummy and put them under your chin. Waiter, I'll dine when the car is less crowded. But, ma'am... Besides, I'm allergic to drafts, and there's certainly a big one blowing through the car right now. And so we leave the diner and we're back in the club car where our beautiful friendship had its beginning. And look, don't you want to lie down and play dead? Oh, come, come. We're three hours of travel ahead. Why not break down and get conversational? I'm not on the make, honest. Said he with a leer. Really, I'm not. Now, what's wrong with a little conversation to make a train trip shorter? Nothing, I suppose. My name is Dennis Michael Murray. What's yours? It's, it's Esmeralda. Esmeralda Higgins. Esmeralda Higgins. Well, it's a pretty name. Thank you. Are you going to New York to stay? No, just visiting. Are you planning anything definitely? I'm five feet three inches tall. I weigh 118 pounds. I smoke occasionally, drink less occasionally, and I study law at Cornell. A lawyer? You? <laughs> What's funny about that? Well, if you'd said anything else, a model or a nurse, even a lady barber, but a lawyer. <laughs> What's wrong with my being a lawyer? Well, you're not the career girl type, that's all. Oh, so you analyze character, too. Sure, sure. You're the maternal type. I can see mother love shining out of those beautiful blue eyes. You know, the thing for you to do is to marry some nice fella, set her down in a rose-covered cottage... And raise dozens of children, I suppose. Sure, that's better than raising dozens of affidavits. You know, your kind of thinking went out with the horse and buggy, Ira, and believe me, that's where I wish you were right now. Though if you'll pardon my back, I'd like to look at the scenery. <laughs> Well, Miss Higgins, we've come to the end of our journey. But that shouldn't end our friendship, now should it? I don't see why not, Mr. Mulligan. Murray. Oh, no kidding, Esmeralda. Let's be friends. I'm taking a cab. Can I drop you somewhere? No, thank you. Well, maybe I can drop your baggage off where you're going to stay. How's that? You do that for me, really? Well, that's awfully sweet of you. I'd be glad to. Just tell me where to go. I would, but I don't use profanity. Goodbye, Mr. Mulligan. Dear Mom, it's been a bad day. I'm sorry, madam, but if you want us to trace your husband, you'll have to come to our offices and make the usual arrangements. I know, madam, but uh, yeah, yeah, until five o'clock. Yes. Vance Detective Agency. I'll see if he's in. Pardon me, but I'm here to see Mr. Parker. A second door to your left, please. Thank you. Come in. Now, please don't worry, Mr. Murphy. Our service has always been satisfactory, hasn't it? Yes, I know it's important. It's just as important to us. I'll have my best operatives there. Goodbye, Mr. Bentley. All right, young lady, what's your experience? Well, not very much, I'm afraid. What? There's a fine how do you do. Well, I'm sorry, Miss... Miss... Uh, Vance. I'm Mary sorry. Vance. I'm sorry, Miss Vance, but I'm afraid you won't... Mary Vance? Not... not Mary Vance? Mm-hmm. Positively. Well, how do you do? I'm Parker, the agency manager. I hope you'll forgive me. Of course. I, uh, I gather you were expecting someone. I was. We're a little short-handed right now. The agency has more business than it can handle. Well, this is good news. Ordinarily, it would be. You've heard of the Bentley Emerald? Mm -hmm, even in Ithaca. Well, old P.J. Bentley is giving it to his son's bride-to-be as a wedding gift. She's Gloria Van Dusen. Oh, sure. Sure, the well-known glamour girl. Exactly. The reception's tonight after the wedding, and the Emerald will be on display along with the other gifts. 
We've been commissioned to see that nothing happens to him. Sounds like quite a feather in our cap. It is, it is. His is the biggest account we have. Of course, the police will have their people, too. But old P.J. Bentley is eccentric enough to have no confidence in the police and rich enough to get away with it. And that's why we're in a jam. A jam? I'm afraid I don't understand. We're in a jam because I haven't a single operative available. At least not for that kind of an assignment. I need a clever woman. I've even had to try the employment agencies. Matter of fact, that's where I thought you were from. Oh, I see. Well, our attorney tells me you're going to sell the agency. Yes. Yes, I am, Mr. Parker. Good. Uh, Mr. Parker, you say you're stuck for a woman operative for the Bentley affair tonight? Oh, yes. And it's very important. You you shouldn't pass up this job. That's right, but... Uh, I... And you need a fairly intelligent young woman who looks well in evening clothes, who can pass for a member of the smart set, who can be trusted to keep her eye on the emerald. Is, is that correct? <laughs> you sound as if you were applying for the job. I am. You're what? Applying for the job. Do I get it? Oh, please, Miss Vance, you're joking. Mm, I'm not joking. After all, I own this agency. I must have its welfare at heart. But you don't know anything about this kind of work. But this is a crisis, and I think I can help. You're not a detective. Oh, I know that, but I've studied quite a bit of criminal law, and I think I'll I'll do just as well as somebody you'd get from an employment agency, if you've got someone. Now, Miss Vance, I must insist that you... Now, just a minute, Mr. Parker. I own this agency, and I'm in a better position to insist than you are. And that's just what I'm doing. Okay, Miss Vance. You're the boss. You'll need a license, and I'll assign one of our men to stand by and keep an eye on you while you're keeping an eye on the Emerald tonight. He's not the type for this kind of a job, but he'll have to do We'll it. manage. I hope so. Yes, sir? Send in Bingo Doherty. Gee, Miss Vance, them newspaper guys said he'd give you a big play this afternoon, didn't they? Uh, uh, when you got your license, I mean. Yes, Bingo. I never saw so much gallantry in one place before. Murder, murder. They sure went to town. Too bad all that valley who's going to be wasted. Yes. Uh, look, Miss Vance, are you really going to sell the agency? Why don't you run it? Now, do I look like a gumshoe? No, Bingo. I'm studying to be a lawyer. The agency wouldn't be any good to me, and I wouldn't be any good for it. After all, it's, it's no business for a woman. Yeah, I guess you got the right idea. I know I have. Only, gee, it's kind of shame. Your Uncle Mike run the joint for 25 years, and the name of Vance and the detective business has been like a, well, like a institution. In other words... I know, Bingo, uh, but that's the way things work out sometimes. Yeah. Ain't life sorted, Miss Vance. Well, Bingo, this is probably the most expensive wedding reception of the decade. Yeah, <laughs> There's enough champagne here in this joint to float a battleship. Say the least. Hey, Bingo, you know what I think? I think we ought to separate, mingle with the guests, perhaps. We don't want to look too obvious. Oh, no, wait a minute, Miss Vance. You ain't going to leave me alone with all these stuffed shirts, are you? <laughs> don't forget you're doing a pretty good job of stuffing your own shirt. Yeah, and this starch collar is killing me. Hey, suppose you wait here and keep an eye on the bride's presence while I sort of drift around and mingle with the upper crust. Okay, Miss Vance. Oh, say, look at Murray of the Headquarters Society detail in the soup and fish. <laughs> Ain't he got the savoir fairy? Who? Over there by the pillar, the good-looking guy. What? I know that man. I met him on the train. Is he a policeman? Detective sergeant and a good one, too. Well, well, well. Pardon me, Bingo. And don't forget your own savoir faire. Huh? Oh, 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 sure. <laughs> Gee, if the guys at Barney's Bar could get a gander at me now, they'd swear I was getting, uh... Class conscious. Hmm, made him, made him. May I have this dance, Miss Higgins? I'd be delighted. Oh, it's you. That's right. Shall we? What can I lose? <laughs> well, I never dreamed we'd meet again, at least so soon. It is a small world, isn't it? Sergeant Murray. Yes. Uh, who told you I was on the force? Oh, I know all about you, Sergeant. For example, you're on the society detail. <laughs> well, I, I guess I may as well break down and confess. Yep, I'm always assigned to these society affairs. The inspector thinks I look good in tails. He's right there, but one tail would be enough. Mm, sweet child. And you're here to guard the Bentley Emerald, aren't you? That's right. Hey, what do you know about the Emerald? I also know that Mr. Bentley thinks the police force are incompetent and immaterial. Oh, he does, huh? Now, Sergeant, don't stop dancing. People are looking at you. Well, let them look. And how is it that you're so familiar with Mr. Bentley's opinions, Miss Higgins? Oh, not Higgins. Vance. Mary Vance. You see, Mr. Bentley hired me to keep an eye on the Emerald. In person. He hired you? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Vance. 
You... You wouldn't have any connection with a Vance detective agency, would you? I own it. You? <laughs> Woo, from mouthpiece to gumshoe in 48 hours. Oh, lady, you change careers more often than I do shirts. What's wrong with my being a private detective? Now, now, don't stop dancing, Miss Pinkerton. I mean, Miss Vance. People are looking. Really, Sergeant, I think you're afraid of a little competition. Oh, sure, sure. I'm afraid to pieces, but not of competition. Now, look, Esmeralda. The name is Mary. All right, all right, Mary. Now, kidding on the square. Go back to your law books, but fast. Oh, now you think the law is good is a good career for a woman. Well, it's better than the racket you're getting into. Crime isn't romantic. It's it's ugly and sordid. It's rotten. Is that all, Sergeant Murray? No, that's not all. You get yourself all mixed up with some really bad boys, and your pretty head won't be worth a nickel. Now, take a guy's advice and go back to school like a good little girl. Would it be too much of a strain for you to mind your own business? Okay, okay. Let's dance. People are looking. Well, that's better. Don't holler when you get hurt. I won't. And don't you pout if I make you look bad. That's a deal. Incidentally, now that you're a working detective, you might as well know the kind of playmates you're taking on. What do you mean? You see that man near the French window? You mean that tall, distinguished-looking man with the gray hair? Yep. That tall, distinguished-looking man is Silk Jennings, one of our better jewel thieves. No. Yes, he usually works for European pleasure spas, but the war killed that. And that man in the corner there... He reminds me of my English professor. Well, he's none other than High Pocket's Harry Miller. Also a dealer in hot ice. You mean they're criminals? Yep. They're probably after the emerald. Wouldn't be a bit surprised. Well, then why don't you arrest them or something? Because I haven't a thing on them yet. You know, they don't look like criminals. I mean, they... Of course they don't. That's why they're top notches. But neither of them would stop at murder, believe me. Excuse me just a minute, please. Where are you going? Just a part of my nose, if you don't mind. Well, hurry back. What happened to the lights? Turn on the lights! What's happening? They're on again. What happened? The emeralds, it's gone. It's stolen. Hey, 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 hey. Sergeant, do you know what happened? Well, looks like they got to the emerald. Murder, murder. Hey, you see my boss, Miss Vince? Nope, she disappeared just before the lights went out. Disappeared? Yes, and so have two of the slickest jewel thieves in the country. Come on, Bingo. The theft of the famous Bentley Emerald, and the vast ballroom is the scene of excitement and confusion. No one, however, knows of the disappearance of Mary Vance and the two uninvited but nonetheless to be reckoned with gentlemen from the underworld. That is, no one but Detective Sergeant Dennis Murray and the redoubtable Bingo Dorrit. Well, Bingo, did you talk to the gateman? Yeah, I conversed with him. Did he see anything? Plenty. Two cars pulling out of the driveway and going like bats out of... Uh, Hades. Oh, that crazy girl. She's chasing two of the most dangerous jewel thieves in the country. But that ain't it, Sarge. What ain't it? Well, uh, what you said. She ain't chasing them. They're chasing her. Are you kidding? Well, the gate man says the face car what pulled out had a dame at the wheel, and the car that was following her had two guys in it. But that can't be, unless... 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 Unless what, Sarge? Bingo. You don't think Mary would swipe that piece of green glass, do you? Hey, if I thought you meant that, I'd load a boom on you. Okay, okay. Let's go. Where? Well, after that nitwit boss of yours. Get my car, Bingo. Bring it. Make this an express stop, will you? Floor, please. Tenth <laughs> floor. Say, where'd you get the shiner? I got caught in a jam. Mm. Would you like some beefsteak? Thanks, kid. I'm not hungry. Okay, lady. Here's the tenth floor. Thanks. Clerk, this is Miss Vance in 1005. I'm not home to anyone, understand? Anyone at all. <laughs> oh. So sorry to intrude. Who are you? How'd you get in? With this pass key. Well, what do you want? The Bentley Emerald, Miss Vance. And don't try to lift that phone. What makes you think I have the Emerald? We know you got it. Let's not beat around the bush, Miss Vance. Miller and I were after the stone, had the stage all set. You just worked faster than we I did. don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no? Incidentally, I do want to apologize for the condition of your eye. The darkness, you know. 
I didn't expect to find someone else reaching for the stone at the same time I did. Gentlemen, I think you're making a mistake. She's too smart, Silk. Let's get tough and scream. If you take another step toward me, I'll scream. Now, just a moment, just a moment. I'm sure there's no need for violence. Miss Vance, let me explain the situation. Uh, do. To begin with, Miller and I went after the emerald on our own hook. You should know that a stone so large and so famous would be extremely difficult to dispose of. Consequently, we've been operating as what might be termed contractors. Contractors? Yes. We were hired to obtain the emerald and for a very handsome retainer, too. You stepped in and almost robbed us of our commission. Ah, the world's a cruel place, isn't it? Yeah, for some people. Get to the point, Silk. Miss Vance, we aren't the kind of men to lose a large sum of money with a smile. I suggest that we cut you in and split the proceeds three ways. Oh, you cut me in? Exactly. To dispose of the emerald, you would eventually have to do business with our employer, who happens to be the most important fence on the East Coast. (laughs) He's a good man to have for a friend. A bad one for an enemy. And I'm only to get a third. Is is that all? Well, on this deal, yes. But I think you're a clever girl. We ought to be able to work together. And do well, too. And if I refuse? Then Mr. Miller here will be forced to apply his own method of persuasion. Oh. Well, I think you boys have something there. It's it's a deal. But I want to turn the stone over to your boss personally. Excellent. You are a clever girl. Good evening, folks. Uh, 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 uh. Papa's got a nasty old gun that might explode and go boom. Right in your puss. Funny man, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, now you two step over to the corner and face the wall. That's right. And you, young lady, come over toward me. Say, why did you pick up that black guy? It's a Lulu. You think you're clever, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you stand right here by me while I give these gentlemen the once-over. Toting any artillery, Silk? I never do. Sure, sure. But this time, you were a little out of your territory. Yes, and you're a long way from yours. Drop your gun, Sergeant, because I got one right in your back. What? Are you in with these... Oh. Oh. Good work, Miller. Did you have to hit him with that thing? Come on. You better not lose any more time. Yeah, let's get going. <laughs> Just a moment. Ah, gentlemen, come in. Thanks, Mr. Latour. And who is your charming companion? We'll tell you about that in a minute. Tell me first, did you get the stone? In a roundabout way. Yes, you see Miss Vance here beat us to the emerald, but we were able to persuade her to join forces with us. At no additional expense to you, I might add. Excellent. Oh, she's a very clever girl, Latour. On our way here, she was also instrumental in preventing our arrest. Incredible. Meaning what, Mr. Latour? I mean that you are as clever as you are charming. Where is the emerald? Miss Vance has it. Miss Vance? Of course. There you are. I confess that I am baffled. What do you mean, baffled? Miss Vance, why you should steal the Bentley emerald, prevent the arrest of my associates, and then so very obligingly bring the stone to me is more than I can understand. Well, I I decided after talking to these gentlemen that I'd like to join forces with you. Especially since you are a detective. She's a detective? A detective? Uh, Certainly, you idiots. Don't you read the newspapers? There's her picture. The story that goes with it. She's taken over the Vans Agency. Hey, what a nervy dame. Well, uh, anyway, we've got the emerald. Yes. And we also have a live corpse on our hands. Bingo, where are you? I was down in the lobby keeping my eyes peeled like you said when I seen Miss Vance and them two guys come out. So I figure I better follow them. And guess where they went? They went in the back door of Latour's. You know, that high-class jewelry store on Fifth Avenue. Well, I'll be... Bingo, you stay right where you are till I get there and don't let anybody in or out. And don't go in yourself, you get it? Ah, uh, darn that crazy girl. Any police headquarters. Then I take it we're all agreed? That's, That's right, right, Mr. Sir. All right. We leave immediately for my cottage in Maine. It's right on the ocean, you know. By the time Miss Vance's body is washed in, she'll be unrecognizable. Now, wait a minute. 
You know, murder's a serious business. Ah, but at this stage of the game, so is exposure. I'm sorry we have to do this. Truly, I am. Come on, let's get going. Yes, we can leave by the street door. It's late and no one will see us. We'd better gag her anyway. Good idea. Take care of it, Miller. Right. (laughs) Hey, it's the cops. Come on, this way. But the girl. If we're caught with her, we're dead. I know. Wait, we put her in the vault. She'll suffocate. We can dispose of her body later. Now, hurry, hurry, out the back way. Go on, Let him have it. All right, boys, the game's up. Come on, up with your hands. Nice work, Bingo. Are you hurt? And that, where's Miss Vance? Yeah, where is she, Latour? I don't know what you're talking about. All right, boys, we'll make them talk. Wait a minute. I'm not taking a murder rap. She's in the vault. Get her out, Latour. It's not locked. Just throw back the bolt. Well, well, well. Look at little Miss Pinkerton. Come on, out you go. Think you're smart, don't you? That's what I get for saving your life. Get back in the safe. Oh, all right. Noonan, you, Noonan, you can take these gentlemen down to the station now. All right, sir. Come on, get along. Come on. Now, when and where did you get that shiner, Miss Gumshoe? Well, I took the emerald. And why, if I may be so bold, did you snitch Exhibit A? Because it was the only thing I could do. I saw this high pockets individual getting ready to turn off the lights. I had to act quick. I grabbed the emerald first. And? And, well, I got the black eye in the tussle with Jennings, and, and then I got scared and I ran. I, I don't know why. I got into my car and they followed me. But why did you stick a gun in my back and get me knocked out? Oh, that. Yes, yes, that. Well, I found out that they were only part of a ring. The tour was the big shot, the master fence. That was even bigger than the emerald itself. I had to follow through, and, and, then, and then you got in the way. Uh-huh. And you might add, it was a mighty good thing for you that I got back in your way. Well... Thank you kindly, Sergeant. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Now, let me tell you something, little Miss Muffet. All you did tonight was to mess up the sweetest little trap ever set by the police department of this great city. Ah, uh-uh, don't be a poor sport, Sergeant Murray. Believe me, I'm not. We've been trying to find the identity of the man above Jennings and Miller for a long time, so tonight we set a trap. A trap? Yes, but the wrong mouse nibbled the cheese. Why do you think I gave Jennings and Miller so much rope? It's because I wanted them to steal the emerald. You wanted them to steal the emerald? Sure. It was a fake. A fake? You mean I took a chance on my life for an imitation emerald? That's right. You don't think we'd bait a trap of the real article? We arranged the whole thing with Mr. Bentley and the insurance company. <gasps> well, of all the things. Uh-oh. Uh, here comes the press. Hi, boys. Hi, Sarge. Hey, isn't that Mary Vance? Hi, Mary. Greetings, gentlemen. Say, by the looks of that shiner, Miss Vance has been a busy little girl. Come on, Mary, spill it. Now, what happened? Now, uh, oh, oh, now, just a minute, boys. Step aside, will you, Sarge? Come on over here, Miss Vance, and tell us all yeah. about it. Well, how do you like that? <laughs> it looks like Miss Vance is getting all the play, huh, Sarge? Yeah, so it does. Well, that's life, Sarge. In other words... In other words, a guy named Murray is a first-class... Uh, 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 uh. Sarge. Temper, temper. <laughs> I don't mind admitting I had a very anxious night, Miss Vance. You had an anxious night, Mr. Parker. How does it feel to have your name on every front page in town? Yeah, Miss Vance, you were in the limelight, all right. It hurts my eyes. Too much excitement, eh? Well, you can relax now. After last night's business, you'll have no trouble at all getting some good offers for the agency. Mm Mm-hmm. Come in. Ah, am I intruding? Not at all, Sergeant. Good. I'd like to take you to lunch. Really? As a tribute to my ability? Frankly, no. As a tribute to your luck. Stop kidding yourself, Mary. You're not a detective and you never will be. That's not what the newspapers think. Yeah? Well, if I hadn't been around, the only newspaper headline you'd rate today would have been an obituary. Sour grape. I, uh, hear you're going to sell the agency. I don't know where you got that impression. But, Miss Vance... Are you kidding? I had intended to sell it, but you men who think all women are helpless nitwits give me 12 kinds of a pain. Not only am I going to keep the agency... But I'm going to show you that I can outsleuth you in every direction, including spades. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'm going to lunch alone. Ain't she the spit of her Uncle Mike? Yep. So she's going to be Miss Pinkerton Incorporated, huh? Well, one of these days, she's going to poke that pretty nose of hers into something and get it caught. And I won't be around to unhook it. Or, uh, will I? <laughs> Boys, 
Reporting Miss Blondell and Mr. Powell were Hanley Stafford, Gail Gordon, Ed Max, Elliot Lewis, Frederick German, and Sarah Berner. Story by Carl Foreman and Charles R. Marion. Music composed and directed by Lenny Kahn. Miss Pinkerton Incorporated was conceived and produced by J. Donald Wilson. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Listen in next week to Miss Pinkerton Incorporated for the story of the man who became obsessed with the urge to kill. Starring Joan Blondell and Dick Powell. Welcome back. You know, I... I... An interesting episode. There, there were some strong points to it, but I do get some ideas of why uh, uh, it didn't uh, make it. Um, on one hand, it did definitely uh, seem to be uh, playing to uh, a female pride. You know, go ahead and prove that um, you can uh, compete with the uh, men. Um, but I felt it was kind of uh, undercut a little bit in terms of that feel. The fact that she didn't really seem to uh, want to do it uh, out of enjoyment, but more out of uh, proving herself, unlike, say, uh, Candy Matson. Though, if anything, the uh, thoughts of uh, Dick Powell's character kind of uh, makes you want to cheer for her anyway, even though she's doing something she doesn't... Um, really want to do. There was one big plot hole I, I did notice in this particular uh, program, and that was that uh, the jewel was a phony, and um, uh, the, guy, the owner was in on it, yet the owner went out and called in a phony, you know, called in a private investigator and paid them to protect this uh, phony jewel, which would seem to kind of um, complicate matters. But perhaps that was just to make it look real. The cast on this episode was really uh, a strong cast for this uh, program. Uh, for a summer show, um, uh, with uh, Gail Gordon, who is, of course, famous for a lot of roles, including uh, Mr. Conklin, Mayor La Trivia over on uh, Fibber McGee and Molly. Uh, Hanley Stafford uh, really plays into the uh, comedic side of this. Uh, Stafford was famous as a uh, daddy to uh, the Baby Snooks character, uh, who was played by Fanny Bryce for so many years over the radio. And then, of course, you have Edwin Max and Elias Lewis, who would uh, star as uh, Gallagher and Captain Carney uh, over on Voyage of the Scarlet uh, Queen. And Lewis really, uh, beca- I mean, phenomenal uh, radio talent. Of course, there can be some speculation as to why the show didn't make it. Uh, truth be told, it was uh, intended as a summer replacement series, and it lasted uh, during the summer. Um, there were still, I, I think, some uh, rough edges in the series, but that was probably the main reason. Powell and Blondell had had a very good 1930s, and uh, holding them on radio forever, uh, I think, would be a very uh, big challenge indeed, and pretty expensive. These radio summer, summer series were often never uh, intended to go beyond at uh, one season and served as a vehicle for uh, the networks to keep people listening while giving some of their stars a rest. And uh, it also allowed uh, the actors to uh, increase their own exposure and hopefully land uh, a bigger audience for their next films. This was also the first uh, sort of role of Dick Powell in any sort of detective or mystery program. Um, uh, it was noted uh, when I was doing some research, I listened to Jim Widner's commentary on the show, and he noted that um, Joan Blondell had appeared in a movie called Miss Pinkerton that didn't have uh, uh, any uh, relation uh, to uh, this story. Uh, but uh, in uh, this episode, we see him kind of developing... Uh, the characteristics we'd he- hear in Richard Rogue and Richard uh, Diamond. All right, well, that will do it for today. Next uh, Wednesday, we'll be back again with Johnny Dollar. And, of course, on Friday, we'll uh, conclude with uh, the final parts of this week's episode. 
in the meantime, uh, and uh, tomorrow it will be uh, Nick Carter. Uh, in the meantime, your comments are appreciated. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.